Most people think GLP-1 medications are all about the doses printed on the box, 0.25 milligrams, 0.5 milligrams, or 1 milligram. But what if I told you that some of the most powerful metabolic improvements come from doses far lower than what's considered therapeutic? What if the secret to better results, fewer side effects, and more stable appetite isn't going higher, but actually going lower? In today's video, we're breaking down the science behind microdosing versus split dosing, two dosing strategies that completely change how GLP-1 medications behave inside of your body. You'll learn why subtherapeutic microdoses often outperform standard doses, why split dosing helps some people but not others, and how understanding the pharmacology can help you avoid plateaus, minimize nausea while still losing weight. If you've ever wondered why some people thrive on GLP-1s while others struggle, or why two patients have different results on the same dose, this video is exactly for you. So let's get started. So what exactly is microdosing? Microdosing means using a subtherapeutic intentionally lower dose of GLP-1 medication to get meaningful benefits without the nausea, appetite shutdown, and other side effects that can cause you to stop. The key word here is subtherapeutic. Based on clinical trials, the minimum therapeutic dose of terzepatide is 5 mg and the minimum therapeutic dose of semaglutide is 0.5 mg. That means that the starter doses we all know, 2.5 mg terzepatide and 0.25 for semaglutide, are technically microdoses. These pharmaceutical companies created these doses to help your body adjust GLP-1 agonists to minimize the side effects in the first few weeks. But here's what I've learned after working with hundreds of patients. A lot of people get real noticeable improvements in A1C, appetite control, and weight loss from these so-called starter doses. So in my practice, I actually consider 2.5 milligrams of terzepatide and 0.25 milligrams of semaglutide to be therapeutic for most of my patients, which means that for my patients specifically, a true microdose is anything below that, less than 2.5 milligrams for terzepatide or less than 0.25 milligrams for semaglutide as long as it's taken once weekly. Now, if you take that weekly dose and start dividing it into two injections a week, that becomes split dosing, which I'll explain later. The whole point of microdosing is simple. Give you metabolic benefits without making you miserable. Even at very low doses, people can see mild appetite reduction, improved insulin sensitivity, fewer cravings, and more stable hunger signals throughout the day. These changes might seem subtle, but they're consistent, sustainable, and extremely well tolerated. And that's the most important part. A lot of my patients stop this medication because of side effects, but microdosing aims to minimize that. So when does microdosing make sense, right? Microdosing is a great option if one, you want results without major side effects, you're very sensitive to higher doses, you prefer gradual sustainable progress instead of rapid weight loss, or you've reached your goal weight and you want to maintain. And lastly, if you want metabolic benefits without the aggression of full therapeutic dosing and continued weight loss. Who do I not recommend microdosing for? Microdosing is not ideal for people with morbid obesity who need to aggressively lose weight. By aggressively, I don't mean speed-wise, I mean a number, you need to lose a lot of weight. Patients with type two diabetes who have uncontrolled blood sugar and people who need therapeutic doses to reach metabolic goals. Many people with more severe obesity or diabetes simply need higher doses to get the blood sugar control and weight loss that they're aiming for. I mentioned this word earlier, but now let's talk about it in more detail. So what is split dosing? Split dosing is when you take your full weekly dose of a GLP-1 medication, but instead of injecting it all at once, you divide it into two or more smaller injections throughout the week. People usually do this to soften the side effects or make the medication feel more even and sustainable throughout the week. For example, if your weekly semaglutide dose is one milligram, split dosing would be taking 0.5 milligrams on Monday and then another 0.5 on Thursday. If you're on trisepatide, 2.5 milligrams weekly, that might be 1.25 milligrams on Monday and then another 1.25 milligrams on Thursday. But here's the part that most people misunderstand. Split dosing does not lower your total drug exposure. You're still getting the same amount of medication each week and your body still reaches similar peak concentrations just twice. If you look at any GLP-1 concentration curve and plug the numbers in, you'll see the same thing. Splitting the dose doesn't actually make the total exposure any gentler. So who do I recommend split dosing for? Honestly, nobody. And here's why. People online often argue that split dosing gives you a more steady concentration of GLP-1 in your system. But when you really think about it, that's actually not really a good thing. And here's why. Here's what's happening inside of your body at a cellular level. When a GLP-1 molecule binds to its receptor, the receptor is pulled inside of the cell. From there, one of two things can happen. It either gets recycled and sent back to the surface to bind to another GLP-1 molecule, or it gets destroyed, broken down inside of a lysosome. It's the cell's garbage disposal, basically. Under normal conditions, many receptors get recycled. They get brought back to the surface to bind more GLP-1 molecules. But when GLP-1 signaling is constant and nonstop, studies actually show that more receptors get sent to lysosomes and get destroyed. This means that there are fewer receptors on the cell surface, 
less signaling, and weaker effectiveness of your medication over time. So even though split dosing might feel smoother, you're actually pushing your receptors harder and risking faster desensitization. So why does this matter? You don't want your GLP-1 receptors hammered nonstop. You want peaks and valleys because those valleys give your receptors time to come back, reset, and stay sensitive to the medication. And yeah, sometimes you're supposed to feel a little hungry. That's a normal, healthy part of being a human. We don't need constant hunger suppression, although sometimes it may feel like it. So while split dosing may seem like a smart hack, the long-term biology doesn't support it. If anything, it may reduce the effectiveness of your medication over time. At the end of the day, your GLP-1 medication is only as effective as the way you dose it. And after years of treating patients, studying pharmacology, and living through this journey myself, here's the truth. Microdosing gives you the benefits without the biological burnout. When you use small intentional subtherapeutic doses, you're getting a gentle and sustainable activation of GLP-1 pathways. You still get appetite controlled, reduced cravings, steady weight loss or weight maintenance, and far fewer side effects at a much lower cost. But the biggest advantage, your receptors stay responsive. They stay healthy and they stay sensitive. You're working with your biology instead of overwhelming it and hammering these receptors. This is exactly why I recommend avoiding split dosing long-term. Yes, split dosing can reduce the intensity of the weekly peaks and valleys and smooth out some side effects, but it doesn't reduce the total exposure. You're still flooding your GLP-1 receptors with high therapeutic levels multiple times per week. And over time, that repeated high-level stimulation can lead to receptor downregulation and receptor desensitization, which blunts the signaling pathways and decreases the effectiveness of your medication. People don't talk about this, but it's real. Once those receptors start shutting down, you need higher and higher doses to get the same therapeutic effect, and that's exactly how people end up stuck, frustrated, and feeling like their medication stopped working. Microdosing avoids all of this completely. It preserves receptor sensitivity and supports long-term longevity goals. It gives you control over your health without sacrificing your quality of life to side effects. So if you're looking for a way to make your GLP-1 therapy sustainable and affordable and tolerable, microdosing is the strategy that I cannot recommend enough. You deserve a plan that works with your body, not against it. That's all I have for this video, but I'll see you next time.